Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to continue our discussion of Sleeping Warrior and his thoughts on gravity and density. Primarily, we're going to work on force today and weight. So let's cue up the music and get started. Okay, so here's his next statement, and that is that density is a force. What we're going to do is ignore the rest of it. You know, here he says, uh, another poster has told you for years that weight is a force, density is not a force. Of course, that is correct. Well, I think the best way to talk about this is describe exactly what we mean by a force and how that relates to weight, how it relates to density and where gravity comes into play. One, we have to have density, and then we have weight, and we have force, and then we have gravity. So let's look at these four items. Let's start off with a big one. Let's go ahead and go with force first. Now, once again, we're gonna go straight to Google and type in the simple phrase, definition of force, and we're gonna go ahead and have a look at it. Let's see, the first one is strength or energy as an attribute of physical action or movement. Oh, notice weights of force. Did you see that? Look at that right there. Now, one thing that we need to look at when we look at the definitions of words, there are a variety of definitions of words. For example, you can force a door. You can force your will upon somebody else. You can force somebody to do something. These are not what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about force as in the sense of physics and motion. What about this one right here? What is the definition of a force in physics? Let's see what that says. In physics, a force is any interaction that, when unopposed, will change the motion of an object. A force can cause an object with mass to change its velocity, which includes begin moving from a state of rest, i.e. to accelerate. Force can also be described intuitively as a push or a pull. Now here's an interesting one. Meaning of force, the physics classroom. Let's go see if this does anything here to help us out. The meaning of force, types of forces. A force is a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. Whenever there is an interaction between two objects, there is a force upon each of these objects. When the interaction ceases, the two objects no longer experience this force. Force only exists as a result of an interaction. Contact forces versus action at a distance forces. Contact forces are those types of forces that result in when two interacting objects are perceived to be physically contacting each other. Examples of contact forces include frictional, tension, normal forces, air resistance, and applied forces. Okay, action at a distance forces, what are these? Are the type of forces that result even when two interacting objects are not in physical contact with each other, yet they are able to exert a push or pull despite their physical separations. Examples of action at a distance forces includes gravitational force. Even when your feet leave the Earth and you are no longer in physical contact with the Earth, there is gravitational pull between you and the Earth. Electric forces, magnetic forces, there's a little outline of them. Let's go see if we have anything else that's in here that's interesting. Let's look at force and wiki. All right, force. Okay, the first would be a, a direct contact force, pulling a pulley and lifting a wave. And we have two non-contact forces at a distance. One would be gravitational and the other would be magnetic. And the equation is force equals mass times acceleration. Let's go see what we can do with this. So, what is weight? Weight is a force because we saw that it was listed as a force and that would be mass times acceleration is the definition of a force. The mass of the object is listed in kilograms and the acceleration is something in meters per second squared. Now on Earth, the acceleration that we have is gravity, which is measured at 9.8 meters per second squared. So for example, my mass is 85 kilos 
and we got roughly 10 meters per second squared here. So that would be roughly 850 newtons. That would be my weight because weight is described as a force in newtons. Now I think I'm just going to take a pause here to clear up a misconception. And that is when you step on your bathroom scale, you get a weight, quote unquote, in kilograms or pounds. Now there's a reason for this. Bathroom scales are calibrated to the acceleration of gravity. So basically, even though my weight is 833 newtons, my bathroom scale takes into account the fact that that includes 9.8 meters per second squared of gravity and reads off my mass as 85 kilos because quite frankly, I don't want to know what my weight in newtons is. I want to know what my weight in kilograms is. So now we've kind of got an idea of what these terms mean. Now gravity, of course, is an acceleration. That's what we're listing it at, and we can easily measure that. And I'll show you how we can do that. Now this is another point that seems to be making the rounds in the flat earth community. Gravity being a force or not being a force, okay? Under Newton, gravity was considered an intrinsic property of mass, and there was a force of attraction between masses. Now. Under Einstein, it's considered the effect of mass on space-time. Both Newton and Einstein, in their concept of gravity, it manifests as an acceleration that is felt by objects. When that acceleration affects a mass, the result is going to be a force. It's just as simple as that. In an iPhone, we have a, um, what they call a micro-machine. We have a plate that looks like this. And then we have an object that has some teeth on it that kind of look like this. So we've got an object here that has teeth on it, like that, that interlace with the teeth on the other object. Now, the last thing that we have on this is we have a series of springs that attach this to the corners. Now, this blue object here can move back and forth like that. As the gap between the blue, the blue object that is free floating and the fixed green object narrows or expands, it changes a current that flows underneath this plate. As a result, based on a force or an acceleration acting on this, say in that direction this whole plate will move this way okay this gap will become smaller this gap will become larger as a result the current that passes through here will change so if you want to look at this as an independent and a dependent variable the independent variable will be the movement of this blue plate back and forth. The dependent variable will be the change in the power output from it. To test this would be to put a force on this plate or an acceleration that would cause movement. It's the movement that we're looking for and, the, and then we're going to measure the effect of the movement on the current output. This is called an accelerometer and there are three of them at least in every iPhone because what will happen is each one of these will be oriented to an X, Y, and a Z axis. Now, let's see what that shows. Now, if we look right here, we have three accelerometers. The one in green is going to be in the Y axis, which is the long axis of my iPhone. The one in red will be on the short axis, or the X axis, of my Y phone. And the last one in blue is in the Z or the Z axis, which is front to back on this iPad. So I have it at an angle right now, but let's go ahead and lay it flat on its back. Now what we are measuring here on the white line on top is there is a total of one gravity worth of force, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. The green line here is reading zero, and that is the y-axis. 
Okay, it's not moving back and forth on the y-axis. And in the x-axis, which is the axis along the short edge of the iPhone, you see that there is a little bit of a negative deflection. But most of the negative deflection is down in the blue z-axis. So, this iPad is experiencing a force of one gravity that is going directly from the top from the top towards the bottom. Now, if I change it so that the y-axis is on the bottom, we see that the entire force remains at one gra gravity, but most of the force is now in the red, which is the x-axis along this sh short edge. Okay, so here's what we have so far. We have gravity is a 9.81 meter per second squared downward acceleration, which is measurable. We are not making any assumptions as to what is causing that acceleration. We are simply noting that we have a measurable acceleration. Now, we understand that force equals mass times acceleration. Now, the mass is in kilograms and the acceleration is in meters per second squared. Okay? So for example, if you have an object that is not moving and no acceleration is acting upon it out in the distant void of space, the force acting on that object will be zero and it will sit right where it is. Now we do have one special type of force and that is weight. Now again, we have the mass of the object that is being weighed times an acceleration. But generally, when we talk about weight in physics, we're talking about the acceleration due to a gravitational force. Now, are there other ways that we can describe this? Yes, if you're doing a loop-de-loop -loop in a fighter jet and you're undergoing a centrifugal force as well, you can be said to be pulling nine gravities. Whereas if you're standing on the Earth undergoing standard 9.81 meter per second squared gravitational force, you are experiencing 1g on your mass. And force, of course, in both cases, is listed in Newtons. And just to recall, a Newton is 1 kilogram times meter per second squared. Now let's look at the next question that we're going to address. Is density a force? Now, density, as you recall, is mass over volume. Force equals mass times acceleration. So here's the mass. We got the mass. But is the acceleration of density, mass times one over the volume. Is this term right here an acceleration? That's what we're going to address in our next episode. So folks, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you for stopping by. We're going to continue this with a discussion of density and buoyancy to finish up this discussion in the next episode. I look forward to seeing you then. Take care, guys. This rabbit hole's too deep for me